Well, one rider to look out for in this one has got to be the youngster John Jeffries. He did so well at the hangover meeting and proved his worth of being up in the adult class now. And also, of course, that the uh, he, uh, small rider that very often we see right at the front of the pack. It is, of course, our European champion, Richard Musson. Uh, Richard already taking up uh, quite a good lead at the moment. Tony Atkin is the rider in second place. We're pleased to see him travelling a long, long way down country to come down here to the Salisbury Sizzler. But Richard Musson is the guy setting the pace at the moment. There's a lot happening back in that third and fourth place, though. I don't know whether it's going to stay like this. Tony Atkins still there in second place. Dean Garten is a rider up in third. Peter Lloyd in fourth. And it is indeed the youngster John Jeffries that's up with that leading pack. As they fly into that pit bend for the third time. Oh, Richard Musson seems to have got away. Peter Lloyd moving up well now, though. Has he got up in the second place, perhaps going into this bend? No, he's still there in first. But he's got a very tight line, though. It is Peter Lloyd that's moved through as they go into the last lap. John Jeffries has moved up in front of Dean Galton as well, as you can see. Oh, John Jeffries going after Tony Atkins as well now as they go into that pit bend. So as we watch and see them go down that back straight. Richard Musson has got away from the rest of the field, but look at John Jeffries come through in the third. A great ride this to start the afternoon off for John Jeffries. As they go over the finishing line, it's the first checkered flag of the afternoon. Richard Musson wins it just on the line from Peter Lloyd. Did John Jeffries take third? I think as he went across the line, that wheel might just have made it. Tony Atkins in fourth place. Dean Garten finishing in fifth place. With the account in great style, a win for number 12, our European champion, of course, Richard Musson. In second place, rider number four, Peter Lloyd. Third place, number 14, John Jeffries. Fourth place, number 10, Tony Atkin. Fifth place, number 16, that's Dean Garton. And sixth place, number 7, that's of course the replacement for Gary Lobb, Darren Pearson. Seventh place was number 5, eighth place, number 8, ninth place, number 133, tenth place, number 1, eleventh place, number 18. The winning time, 127.35. 127.35 as we move on to race two. If you missed any of those, there were 12, 4, 14, 10, 16, 7, 5, 8, 133, 1 and 18. 127.35 the time. And I'm pleased looking across there, although he took quite a heavy tumble on that first bend. It does look as if Trevor is up and okay. Another change of rider in this one, Mick Topless goes in in place of Tommy Palmer. And again, a good lineup of riders we've got here this afternoon. You'll see in these early rides what I mean by that high class of rider. Paul Fry is right in the middle of the pack there, as you can see, as they come out of that first bend. It's Will James that has gone the wide line, and Paul Fry working his way around the outside of Andy Sell. So it's the yellow and red letters of Paul Fry. He's now got himself to the front. It's Andy Sell in those back letters in second place. Will James is holding third at the moment. There's a gap between those three and the rest of the field. Good scrap going on for that fourth, fifth and sixth place. But Paul Fry has already established himself at the front. He looks to be on the sort of form that he finished last year with. Oh, watching that battle for second place because Will James anxiously looked down at machinery there. And I don't know whether he is struggling with his machinery. Steve Bishop is the rider in fourth place. He's got to try and make up that quite large gap between third and fourth. And Will James has lost him on this top bend. I know he was looking down his machinery continually. I don't know he did get a, an engine hesitation there, but he certainly lost it. Although he's up and OK. That means that gap has opened up a little bit more now, which is between second and third place. Steve Bishop, of course, elevated up to third place after the fall from Will James, but Paul Fry, no question about the winner. He takes the second checker flag of the afternoon. Andy Searle finishing in second place. Steve Bishop in third spot. And right at number 24 in fourth is Rob Camden.
at race two. It is a very positive result, though, for the winner, number 55, Paul Fry. He goes in first place. In second place, number 50, Andy Sell. In third place, number 34, Steve Bishop. Fourth place, number 24, that's Rob Camden. Fifth place, number 37. Sixth place, number 22. Seventh place, 27. Eighth place, 25. Ninth place, 51. Tenth place, 32. Eleventh place, 36. The winning time, 126.07. Oh, race three underway already. A change in this one is it Duncan Bradford will be riding as 129, not Mark Hamlin. But I'm sure a lot of eyes are going to be on the very tall figure of Mark Seabright in this one as we look to see them come round that first bend. Well, it is indeed Trevor Banks who's got away from Mark Seabright in second. Well, Vincent's up there in third. Well, unusual, of course, to see Trevor Banks riding as 121, but... Uh, don't think there's any mistaking those very distinctive leathers that uh, he's been riding with for many, many years. Mark Seabright, great to see that he was only medically released this week to be able to ride, and already he's saying that he's not lost any of that form that he had before. Oh, James Cawthorway is the rider that's fighting with Rob Vinson in third spot. Cawthorway is on the inside, he's got himself now in the third, it's Rob Vinson that's holding fourth. Oh, we saw a lot of good rides last year from this James Cawthorway, so I wonder if he's going to continue to go up and up and up, because he's doing well at the moment to stay on the back wheel of Mark Seabright. Oh, Chris Malone is the rider in the fifth place, but he's got a battle of his own on his hands. As you can see, that Cawthorway is now starting to close up on Seabright for that second spot. Trevor Banks well away from the battle that's going on behind him, and Trevor Banks... Banks has got to go for this checkered flag now. There's all sorts of problems on that top bend. Mark Seabright looks to have got engine problems, and I think that was Rob Vincent that collided with him. Oh, Mark doing a very wise thing and pushing the machinery over the line, but that was very, very unfortunate for Rob Vincent. And yet again, it looks as if we've lost a chain. Oh, I'm pleased to see that uh, Rob Vincent is up and OK. I don't think you can honestly say that was anybody's fault at all, but uh, no, Trevor Banks. In second place, number 169, James Cawthorway. In third place, number 72, Rob Knight. In fourth place, number 64, Chris Malone. Fifth place, number 129, Duncan Bradford. Sixth place, number 99. Seventh place, number 153. Eighth place, 167. Ninth place, 125, and 10th place, number 62. The winning time, 130.73, 130.73 the time. So still that fastest time is with Paul Fry from race two. And you Steve Wright. Pete Dyer, you'll notice in very distinctively different leathers. You'll notice when he comes round, Mick Cave and Mick Stace, they look to be in good form in practice. Penny Hook, you can see number 34 goes, and Craig Cheatham plus Chris Hathaway. So we should see a full lineup in race five. Well, there we go for the first sidecar race of the afternoon. Craig Cheatham having a cracking start, but he's going right across the lines of everybody else as they go into that first bend. It's Pete Dyer in those uh, very different colours up in second place. Mick Cove and Mick Stace are up in the third spot at the moment, but it's Craig Cheatham that's got away. Craig and Clive Reynolds away from the rest of the field. Pete Dyer up in second spot at the moment. Outfit number 58, of course. He's passenger this afternoon by Justin Westaway. So a good combination, these two. Mick Cove and Mick stay still there in third. It's those three that have got away. Really, this looks to be two separate races as we've got three outfits away, but Craig Cheatham really does look to be in good form. Around that pit bend for the second time as he comes past us. Oh, very, very unlucky last year, Craig, not to have... Uh, done better in the Masters round, but he looks to be on form to start this season off. 
Well, Mick Cave looked to be getting closer to Pete Dyer then with that second spot, but uh, it's not to be. And I'm intrigued that Gary Wright is as far back as he is at the moment. Having his own little battle with uh, Chris Hathaway, and indeed, if I look across that far side, I can see that uh, they're anxiously looking down at machinery, and his hand did go up in the air momentarily down that back straight. So obviously problems for Gary Wright. Penny Hook still holding that fourth place as they go round that top bend for the third time. Craig Cheetah not coming off that pit bend, goes into the last lap as he comes past us. No, he doesn't. He takes a check of flag as he comes past us. That makes better sense. Pete Dyer finishing in second place. Mick Cave and Mick Stace holding on to that third spot. Although they go very, very wide, it's uh, Penny Hook and passenger Keith Watts that take fourth place. Calvin and a win for outfit number one. That, of course, is Craig Cheatham and Clyde Reynolds. In second place, number 58, Pete Dyer and Justin Westaway. Third place, outfit number five, Mick Cave and Mick Stace. Fourth place, number 34, Penny Hook and Keith Watts. Fifth place, number 44, Chris Hathaway and Jeff Knight. And sixth place, number 18. The winning time, 141.63. 141.63. Well, it does look disappointingly as if we have only got to help it. Joe Mark, I can see, has been allowed to go from the pit gate. No advantage, of course, gained from that. He's let the other two outfits go. But it could mean that he gets a finishing place. As at the moment, it is Gary Jackson that's got away from Reg Blackbourne in second spot. Well, they look very, very big gaps, but you never quite know. Joe Mog looks to be going extremely well in that third place. Oh, Gary Jackson almost getting himself a bit of extra practice. Kevin Williams looking over his shoulder. I think he can't believe that there's nobody close to him. But look how Joe Mogg has closed up on Reg Blackbourne. Well, I, can, I don't think that Reg has got problems at all. But Joe Mogg really does look to be flying at the moment. As he goes through on the inside and gets that second place. Well, now, it's asking an awful lot. But has he got time to catch Gary Jackson? We wonder. He does look to be in flying form, does uh, Joe Mogg. Jeremy Swift on the back of Joe Mogg at the moment. Oh, I've just been corrected and told that's Joe Smith. <laughs> well, Kevin Williams seems to have a very easy time of it, doesn't he? He, makes it, he does make passengers look so easy, does Kevin Williams. One more lap to go then for uh, Joe Moore to pick up a second place in his first outing, uh, but Gary Jackson comes round off that pit bend. Well, oh, I spoke too soon, didn't I? That stopped very rapidly indeed. I think Gary Jackson, of course, does take the win. And it means now that with Joe Mogg stopped on that far end, it does mean that Reg and Colin Blackburn pick up a second spot for their first outing. It officially is a win for number 23, Gary Jackson and Kevin Williams. In second place, number two, Reg and Colin Blackburn. The winning time, 141.46. 141.46, and that one a little bit faster than Craig Cheatham's time. But of course, he did have the track totally to himself, didn't he? So the tractor disappears off into the middle. We do, should be underway with a much uh, harder competed car race as we watch them go this time as they come past us looking to see who it is that might have got the advantage John Mitten has gone to the centre green but it is Alan and John Blewett that have got to the front All right, John Hiscock goes after that's Brett Osborne up in third place but Alan and John Blewett they'll be conscious of the time that Gary Jackson put up so they'll be trying to prove that uh, they can indeed go as fast as Gary Jackson as he flies off that pit bend well they do look to be in good form I've got to be careful not to make too many comments about uh, Alan and John Blewett flying these days because uh, rumour is that since he was entered for the Barks Bonanza and European Qualifier, he found out that it was on an airfield. And would you believe he's actually taken out a pilot's licence? Now, I don't know whether that is connected at all or is it just another hobby that he wants to take up. So I think I'll avoid the comments about him flying around the circuit these days. Well, he really does look to be putting the power on as he gets a long way away of John Hiscock. Red Osborne's now under pressure as we look to see him going to that bottom bend. 
Well, that's Pete Goodwin that's come through on the inside of Brett Osborne. Well, looks to have taken the advantage well away from Brett Osborne for that third place. But into the last lap goes Aaron and John Blewett. They really do look to be in good form in this first race. John has got no answer to him at the moment. Uh, Pete Goodwin still there in third, but Osborne not giving up though. He's still trying to close that gap as they go into that top corner for the last time. Around the pit then though, as we turn our attention to the leaders, Alan and John Blewett. They're coming towards the checkered flag this time. A win first time out for Alan and John Blewett. Well, it is John Hiscock and uh, passenger Tony Bemister who takes second spot. Pete Goodwin has hung on to that third place and Brett Osborne has to be content with a fourth. And it was a win definitely for number three, Alan and John Blewett. In second place, number 184, John Hiscock and Tony Bemister. In third place, number 111, that's Pete Goodwin and Carl Bunch. Fourth place, number 73, Brett Osborne and Matt Sleep. And fifth place, number 16. Sixth place, number 45, but interestingly the time, only 143.76. 143.76. It was 3, 184, 111, 73, 16 and 45. So away we go, we the race eight, as we look to see them come past us for the first time. It does look as if we're rather short in numbers, but it's all getting sorted out as they go into that first bend. Well, I said it was getting sorted out, it almost didn't get sorted out. Oh. <laughs> well, it does look as if we got something sorted out by the time we got down to the back straight. And from where I'm looking, that looks like Adrian Davis has made his way to the front. So a good start to the day for a stage as he comes round off that top corner and he establishes the lead as he goes past us for the seconds arm. It's Mick Keith is up there in second spot. Roy Spreadbury holding third at the moment. Oh, that was Roy indeed that was fighting every inch of the way to get round that first corner. Mick Keith took some evasive action in the middle of that bend, but... As we look to the pit bend for the second time, it is Sage Davis that's got away from the rest of the field. Mick Keith and Ken Hollyfield still there in second. And it's Roy McGuigan that's still there in that fourth place. But we see a challenge now for second spot. As Roy Spreadbury goes through in the second. Well, indeed, Mick Keith seems to be losing places rapidly. You can see that Ian Mc... well, Rory McGuigan has made up into that third place as well as they go into the last lap. So Mick Keith moving backwards down the order as Sage Davis doesn't look like being caught at all. He and Vince Davis going well at the moment and will again be looking for that time because they've been more or less out there on their own after that... <laughs> sorting out on the first bend. They indeed take the last of the first leg rides. Roche Bedbury takes second. Oh, quickly looking down through the uh, second leg rise I can see that only two of our first leg winners actually come together that's in race 12 that's Richard Mutton and Paul Fry so Trevor Banks goes uh, up against no other heat winners and Vince Kinchin goes up against no other heat winners interestingly enough it means that in race 9 we've got no previous heat winners from the first leg so will somebody else get a, a first over the line finishing place from this one John Jeffries goes, of course, he had a third first time out. Will James, of course, will be wanting to make up for that disappointing ride at first time out. David Steen, a disappointing tenth place first time out. So uh, I think we've got a good scrap on our hands. John Jeffries on the inside as they go into that first bend. Oh, we watch to see them break, as indeed you can see we've lost a couple of riders on that first bend. But John Jeffries it is that's got to the front. 
I thought I recognised that very distinctive helmet. Of course, uh, number 27 there, Tom Ledbetter. Well, again, we've lost a rider on that pit then, so it's left the way clear for the youngster, John Jeffries. It's Will James that's got to pursue the pace. He's in second place at the moment. Tom Ledbetter in third spot. But really, John Jeffries showing why he got that third first time out. Why indeed he won the hangover at Christmas. He really has come into this adult racing in great form. Come on. Well, indeed, I was uh, looking to see where Mark Chesel was because he had a good ride first time out. But as uh, John Jeffries goes into the last lap, Will James has not been able to close the gap, and indeed Graham Gordon has now gone past Will James. Tom Ledbetter still not out of contention. That's a good scrap between those three. Graham Gordon is close to Will James, and he goes through once again. But it's an incredible lead that John Jeffries has built up. Well, he must be pleased with that. He slows down as he comes past us to go over the line. Pulls the wheel in the air. A win for him, his first this afternoon. Graham Gordon gets that second place. Will James finishing in third, again looking down at machinery, but Tom Ledbetter gets fourth. And number 177, John Underwood, finishes in fifth place. There's a win for number 14, that of course is John Jeffries. In second place, number 263, Graham Gordon. Third place, number 46, Will James. Fourth place, number 27, Tom Ledbetter. Fifth place, number 177, John Underwood. Sixth place, number one, David Steen. Seventh place, number 758, Mark Chesel. Eighth place, number 62. And ninth place, number 36. The winning time, 130.56. 130.56. Win first time out. It's up against Andy Sell. Well, Andy finished in second behind Paul Fry in the first legs. So away we go then with uh, race 10 and looking for those yellow leathers of Trevor Banks. He's in that pack in second spot. It's Dean Gartner's got away. Andy Sell is up there as well. He's up in the second place. So now Trevor Banks has got some work to do. Number 22 is Darren Matthews in fourth place. But Dean Garten going well at the moment. Leads the field as they go around that pit bend. Andy Sell is up there in second place. Trevor Banks in third. Or is he? Trevor Banks closing rapidly on the back wheel of Andy Sell. Well, interestingly, Dean Garten had a fifth place first time out, so you can only imagine he had some sort of problem because he really does look to be in good form now. Trevor Banks, you remember, had a win in his first ride. And Andy Sell, that second place behind Paul Fry, interestingly enough. As we watch to see them that go around for their second lap, there's no answer to Dean Garten at the moment. Andy Sell and Trevor Banks both working hard to make sure they beat each other, but neither of them being able to close up on the leader, Dean Garten. Well, Darren Matthews still holding that fourth place. That really has become rather academic because we watch to see what happens at the front. Dean Garten having a brilliant ride at the moment. Andy Sell still there in second place. And as we see that checker flag be raised, it's going to be yet another winner on the board for Dean Garten, of course, Andy Sell in second, Trevor Banks in third place, Darren Matthews finishing in fourth, and Chris Malone finishing in fifth place. So we've seen the first of our leg one winners, and the CC Solo will win his first of the afternoon for number 16, the flying Cornishman, Dean Garten. In second place, number 50, Andy Sell, his second second of the afternoon. In third place, number 121, Trevor Banks. Fourth place, number 22, that's Darren Matthews. Fifth place, number 64, Chris Malone. Sixth place, number 179, Simon Giddings. Seventh place, number 811, Glenn Stanton. Eighth place, number 305. Ninth place, 153. Tenth place, 133. Eleventh place, number 8. The winning time, 129.25. 129.25 the time. One, because uh, we can see that Peter Lloyd goes in this one in a second first time out. The heat winner was Vince Kinchin. 
he goes in this one. Steve Bishop also goes in this one. He'll be looking out to find some Vince has put it down in the first bend. Oh, he looks to be okay. The rest of the field goes by him safely. So now we've got to see if Vince Kinch can make up for it. But the other interesting thing I was going to say is that the man who's taken over the lead, Mark Seabright, you'll remember, lost the chain first time out. So Mark Seabright, who now leads, will be looking to make up for that disappointing first ride. Well, I'm sure you're going to have to use both sets of eyes this time because watching what's happening at the front, also keep an eye on whether Vince Kinchin can close up and get some valuable points. He doesn't look happy with things at the moment, anxiously looking down at Machina and he's not going the sort of speeds we expect him to. Well, let's stick with the action we've got at the front of the field because Tony Atkins is now having a go around the outside of Steve Bishop. Peter Lloyd is up there in fourth place and both those two, Tony Atkins and Steve Bishop, closing on Mark Seabright. As we watch the them come around that top end, Seabright still got the lead. Tony Atkins is a lot, lot closer to him this time. Peter Lloyd comes through on the inside of Steve Bishop to get into third. Well, a great scrap this at the front of the field and Tony Atkins goes past Mark Seabright. Well, Peter Lloyd has seen him go, and he accelerates down that back straight. Mark Seedright, not happy with the situation, tries to get back at Tony Atkin. He tends to take a very tight line, Mark Seedright. The other two go right the way around the outside, and now, indeed, he's got two in front of him. Tony Atkin wins it. Peter Lloyd gets second, Mark Seedright in third. There's problems for Steve Bishop, which means he'll finish in fifth. Yes, indeed, it did look as if uh, number 24, Rob Camden, managed to get past him before he crossed the line and a very, very disappointing ride for Mark Seabright. Happened in the start of that one, didn't it? A win for number 10, Tony Atkin. In second place, number four, Peter Lloyd. Third place, number 167, Mark Seabright. Fourth place, number 24, Rob Camden. Fifth place, number 34, Steve Bishop. Sixth place, number 327, Kevin Buck. Seventh place, number 18, Tony Stark. Eighth place, number 225, ninth place, number 844, tenth place, number 125, and the winning time, 132.63. Went out to be interesting, but when you look at race 12, we've got Paul Fry, who set the fastest time from those four heats in the first leg. Richard Musson, who looked to be going extremely well. James Cawthray goes in this one again. But as we look to see them go down that back straight, is it going to be a straight scrap between these two? Paul Fry on the inside, Richard Musson on the outside. And it's Musson that's made the best of that first bend, so now we've got a scrap on our hands. It's Paul Fry had the fastest time from those first legs. Rider number five, John Priest, is up in third place, leading that group of riders, looking perhaps for Cawthray to come through, but Musson has got away from Paul Fry. Oh, tremendous ride this from Richard Musson. All the stories in the closed season of Richard Musson giving up, and then he didn't, and it's great to see him back again. And look at the form he's come out in. Oh, this will be a tremendous way to start the season for Richard Musson, if he can keep this sort of form up. Paul Fry doesn't seem to have an answer to him at the moment as they go down that back straight. There's a big, big gap opening up between them and John Priest in third. James Cawthorey is still on the back wheel of John Priest, but those two really away from the rest of the field. Into the last lap goes Richard Musson. Head down as we got used to seeing that style of his. Oh, a good scrap this for that third place. James Cawthorey still trying to find his way around the outside of John Priest. Oh, he's a very experienced rider, John Priest. He won't give that place up easily, but has Cawthorey got through on the inside? And those two together as they get down the back straight. And what's happening at the front? Paul Fry has gone for the lead as they come around that top bend, but only just misses out as Richard Musson just takes it. Who will win this battle for third? John Priest, I said, wouldn't want to give it up easily. He indeed crosses the line in third spot. Well, I think that certainly set the scene for what's going to happen later on in the day. Of course, these are the qualifying rides right? on what's happened with the two rides from the solo classes. Interesting that Richard Musson is the only one to have had two rides and two wins. Paul Fry, of course, a win and a second place. Trevor Banks, a win and a third place. Interesting that Peter Lloyd and Andy Sell both have had two second places. Well, I'm sure as it uh, goes on, it will get a bit more interesting because, of course, not forgetting that Dean Garten has had a win now. Vince Kinchin had a win from the first ride. Listen, everything. I did have it down here. A win for number 12, Richard Musson. In second place, number 55, Paul Fry. Third place, number five, John Priest. 
Fourth place, number 169, James Cawthoray. Fifth place, number 37. Well, that was interesting. Well, they're out to catch me out today, aren't they? They print two fourth places, look. I like that. Fifth place, by my reckoning, is 37. Sixth place, 230. Seventh place, 19. Eighth place, 77. Ninth place, 129. And the winning time, 128.16. Five, five, 169, 37. 230, 1977, 129, and the winning time, 128.16. Well, away we go with the start of the second leg of the sidecar competition. And do this, we can see there's all sorts of problems for Chris Hathaway as he goes to the centre green, but no problems at all for Craig Cheatham. He had a win first time out, and once again, he gets right to the front of the field. So, Craig Cheatham and Clive Reynolds right at the front as they come round off that pit bend, leading the field in second place to them. I can see there's a scrap going on. Brett Osborne's back in third, but holding second at the moment is Rory McGuigan. Brett Osborne still there in third place. Adrian Davis holding on to that fourth place, but looks to be struggling as he comes past us. I don't know whether he got absolutely filled in on that pit bend, but he looked to be struggling to see as he came past us. Well, Chris Hathaway has successfully joined the racing circuit again, but that was a very long excursion that he took on the inside of the circuit. Oh, Craig Cheatham very comfortably stays up front. Roy McGuigan trying to close up on that first place. He holds second at the moment, Roy McGuigan and Chris Ditton. Oh, Brett Osborne still holding that third. And problems I can see on the far side for Chris Hathaway. He's pulled out. And Craig Cheatham has slowed dramatically on that bottom bend. As you can see, he really is crawling around that bottom bend. Rory McGuigan then goes to the advantage and takes him on the inside. Into the last lap. And Craig Cheatham, with all sorts of problems, now sees the rest of the field passing by him. Adrian Davis has gone through. Brett Osborne has gone through. And he can just sit back and watch what's happening. He knows that he's got problems. He won't want to just coast to the line, he'll try and drive as hard as he can, but you can see that anxiously looks down at the bike. It's going to be a chequered flag for Rory McGuigan though. Rory McGuigan and Chris didn't take it. Adrian Davis gets up in the second place, so that's a win in the second place for Adrian Davis. Now to be a win for number 127, Rory McGuigan and Chris Bidden. In second place, number 26, Sage Davis and Vince Davis. Third place, number 73, Brett Osborne and Matt Sleep. Fourth place, number one, Craig Cheatham and Clyde Reynolds. The winning time, 151.91. with race 14. This is heat two of the second leg of the sidecars. Reg and Colin Blackbourne have got themselves to the front as they go into that first bend. Oh, there was all sorts of things going on as they went past us. We thought that Colin Blackbourne had put his hand up to say that they were in problems, but it doesn't look as if they've got any problems now. Well, as you watch them come round off that pit bend for the first time, Reg and Colin Blackbourne certainly lead from John Mitten in second place. Oh, Penny Hook back in fourth spot. Oh, they're all starting to get a little bit spread out. Obviously the conditions are uh, going against the competitors at the moment, but Reg and Colin Blackbourne, I thought they perhaps had problems in their first ride, so maybe they've got those sorted out as they come round past me for the second time. Uh, John Mitten having a good ride this time, up in second place, staying in front of Mick Keep and Ken Hollyfield. Penny Hook still trying to close the gap on them. As we look to that far side, you can see that Reg and Colin Blackbourne are going to have no problems at all if they uh, 
We maintain the machinery going. I think that's closing up for that second place, though. Might keep going for a very tight line, but he comes past me. Still, John Mitten has managed to keep in front of him. Oh, it's just one more lap to go now for Reg and Colin Blackbourne. Not for a moment then that John Mitten was closing on him as well, but as they come round that pit bend, this being a heat two of the second leg, race 14 in your programme, and it looks as if it's going to be a win for Reg and Colin Blackbourne. Followed home in second by John Mitten. And third place going to Mike Keep and Ken Hollyfield. Win for outfit number two, Reg and Colin Blackburn. In second place, number 45, John Mitten and the passenger, Jeff Knight. No, I got that wrong, didn't I? Matthew from Rhoda, of course it is, that uh, partners uh, John Mitten. In third place, number 80, Mike Keep and Ken Hollyfield. Fourth place, number 34, Penny Hook and Keith Watts. And fifth place, number 16, Mark Sarrex and Rob Sarrex. The winning time, 1.36 exactly, 1.36. Well, race 15, and I understand from the uh, start line that it is rather a depleted entry. But this could be a bit more interesting because we've got Gary Wright that's got to the front. He had a very disappointing first ride. We thought there must have been some sort of problem because Gary and Steve Wright we know can go a lot better. Alan and John Blewett up in second place. They had a win first time out. John Hiscock and Tony Bemister in third. They indeed had a second first time out. But Gary Wright seems to have got it much better sorted this time. As he comes past us, leading from Alan and John Blewett. John Hiscock still there in third place. It really does look to be digging out in that top corner as they start to uh, undulate going around that bend. But as you watch the ceiling go down that back straight, that's where Alan and John Blewett look quick. Gary Wright seems to be much, much quicker on the bends. He seems to open up his leads in the middle of the bend. But it's down the straights that Alan and John Blewett look that bit quicker. Oh, there's an awful lot of loose earth flying as well now. I think uh, John Blewett caught a complete mouthful then as he went into this top bend. It's allowed Gary Wright and Steve Wright to get away from him a little bit. And this does look as if uh, Gary Wright's going to take a lot of catching. One more lap to complete then in the race 15 at four. Gary Wright as he goes into that top bend for the last time. Alan and John Blewett look to be a little bit closer this time, but I don't think they're enjoying those corners at all, and they're struggling as they go down that straight. Closing up, that's where they seem to close, but it's the middle of the bend you'll see Gary Wright pull away again. And as the checkered flag is made ready again, Gary's put his hand in the air. So there's problems for Gary Wright. Is he going to make it to the line? How very unfortunate for Gary Wright and Steve Wright. He was definitely making up the better ground on the bends. But whatever that problem is, he seems to have got it back again. 50.09. Well, this looks like to be a much stronger lineup in race 16. Gary Jackson has got to the run. Pete Goodwin has gone after him. Well, there's Pete Dyer that's up in third place. Roy Spreadbury's back in fourth at the moment with Mick Kayser as well. Problems for Pete Goodwin and problems for Gary Jackson. Well, indeed, there was all sorts of problems for Pete Goodwin in the middle of that bend, but he got going again, and then I looked and saw that Gary Jackson has stopped as well. He pushes off into the centre of the circuit, so disappointing to see Gary Jackson going off into the centre. And Pete Dyer has now come through brilliantly through the middle of Pete Goodwin and Roy Spreadbury. Roy desperately trying to get into that second place. He makes it into that second place, as indeed Pete Dyer goes away from those two. Pete Goodwin doesn't want to give up second though and comes back underneath and looks to have got through or has he as they go into the pit bend, those two outfits together. Roy Spreadbury on the outside is gone for a very, very wide line. He comes past us, still on a wide line, but I think has established himself in that second place. Tries to cut the angle off going into that top bend. Pete Goodwin has to settle for third place. Roy Spreadbury then, wide again on the exit of that bend, and this is where Pete Goodwin makes up. Is he going to get through again, or has Roy Spreadbury got enough advantage? Into the pit bend they go. Pete Dyer and Justin Westaway go into their last lap. Roy Spreadbury 
and Steve Kensington holding second. Now there's problems for Mick Cave and Mick Stace as well, as I can see on that top bend. And Pete Goodwin now seems to be losing out on that second place. He's a long way back in that third place now. But as you watch the scene, they're going to the pit bend for the last time. This is going to be a good ride for Pete Dyer and passenger Justin Westaway. As they come round past us, he collects the chequered flag. Second place goes to Roy Spreadbury and Steve Kensington. Third place, of course, to Pete Goodwin. The eighth, that, of course, is Pete Dyer and passenger Justin Westaway. Second place, number 43, Roy Spreadbury and Steve Kensington. Third place, number 111, Pete Goodwin and Carl Bunch. Fourth place, number five, a lap adrift, but he still goes in the results. Mick Cave and Mick Stace. The winning time, 153.79. As we look to the third leg rise of the solo class, it's now starting to get very interesting indeed at the top of the point scoring. But remember what happened second time out. Dean Garten goes in this one. He had a win second time out. Trevor Banks had a win first time out. And John Jeffries had a win second time out. So those three that have got away from the rest of the field, a good scrap should be developing between those three. Trevor Banks has still got the better of it into that, coming out of that pit bend. We've lost John Jeffries on that pit bend, though I'm sorry to say. I thought it was going to be a three-way race, but Dean Gartner's now going to take up the race with Trevor Banks. He's got away from Dean Garn momentarily as he watched the ceiling go by. Well, I hadn't indeed realised that Paul Fry was out there as well. It's Paul Fry that's in third spot. Oh, well, John Jeffries, I hear, is back up again. Well, indeed, the conditions obviously not going well for these riders because you can see how well Paul Fry went first time out. He indeed doesn't look comfortable with the situation in third place. Oh, well, Dave Seen is up in fourth place, and I can see that uh, John Jeffries is now moving his way back up through the field. Oh, well, that's always good to see when a rider takes a tumble in these sort of conditions that they don't hurt themselves at all and get right back into the action again. Well, Trevor Banks going well, and it looks as if Trevor Banks is going to get his second win. Dean Garten gets a second, but a disappointing third place for Paul Fry. Now, Dave Steen gets fourth place, and I do believe that's fifth place for John Jeffries. He's done well to recover from that fall, going against the riders at the moment. But a win, creditably there, for number 121, Trevor Banks. In second place, number 16, Dean Garten. Third place, number 55, Paul Fry. Fourth place, number one, David Steen. Fifth place, number 14, he done well to get up to fifth, John Jeffries. Sixth place, number 24, Rolf Camden. Seventh place, number 99. Eighth place, 327. Ninth place, 133. The winning time, 132.83. 132.83, as I say, the time's now starting to reflect that the conditions are not doing the riders any favours whatsoever. Oh, race 18, and we're already underway with that as they go down that back straight. We'll obviously uh, pick up the riders as they come round past me. Steve Bishop should be one looking for. He indeed leads the field as, as they come round that first bend. Steve Bishop it is that's got away, and it comes past us in first place. Andy Parker is up in second. Darren Pearson holding third at the moment. He's riding as number seven in your programme. But, well, Steve Bishop, I'm sure, will be pleased to be able to be given the advantage in this one. He's been right up there amongst the action, but he's not been scoring great points earlier on this afternoon. Oh, he'll be looking to make sure that this is a win. It's going to make the points table look very interesting indeed after this ride. Andy Parker still holding second place. I think that's Darren Pearson still in third. Those riders getting a little bit spread out now, as you can see. 
the conditions really going against the riders further down the field. They're picking up all the loose and the riders in front of them. That makes it very difficult to see and indeed to negotiate the bends as well. Oh, good to see that Phil Ashcroft is up there having a better ride this time. He's had some disappointing results earlier on, but Rob Vinson, right at the back of the field, disappointed to see that. Rob, perhaps more of a rider that prefers the dry, dusty tracks. And indeed, as we see the checker flag out, this is good points for Steve Bishop. He takes the win. Andy Parker finishing in second, and number seven, Darren Pearson, finishing in third place. Oh, that's Steve Bishop. In second place, number 230, Andy Parker. Third place, number 7, Darren Pearson. Fourth place, number 8, Phil Ashcroft. Fifth place, number 225. Sixth place, number 37. Seventh place, 22. Eighth place, 77. Ninth place, 153. And tenth place, number 36. The winning time, 135.84, 135.84. 34, 230, 7, 8, 225, 37, 22, 77, 153, and 36. Well, we moved to race 19. We're still with the third leg of the uh, qualifying rise for the solos. Well, look at that very distinguished helmet of Tom Ledbetter. He had a very good start then. It's Peter Lloyd that I'm really looking for, though. He's on the outside. Vince Kinchin's there as well. He's working his way through the field coming around that first bend. But it is Peter Lloyd that's got to the front as they come past us. Mark Chesel's up in his second place. Chris Malone is there in third at the moment. Uh, looking perhaps for Vince Kinchin to work his way through. He's finding his way round in fourth place at the moment well i should say fifth place but peter lloyd getting away from the rest of the field he's looking at making this one his by the look of it oh this is a good ride from peter lloyd mark chesel doing well hang on to that second oh vince kinchin has got round the outside of john priest oh, we're looking to see him go for third spot it is Chris Malone that he's going after in third. Uh, we see that last lap flag go out. Peter Lloyd has got one more lap to complete to get a win under his belt. He's had second places up till now. So he'll be pleased with a win. Well, Vince Kinchin has made up that place in the third spot. Uh, he goes round that pit bend, confirming that, that he's going to go into third place. But as we look to see the checker flag coming out, we know that Peter Lloyd has had a good win. Mark Chesel looks like hanging on to that second place. Lloyd takes it. Mark Chesel comes off that top bend for the last time to get a good second place. Vince Kinchin has done well to get in the third. You can see how much earth he's collected who he's been going round. Right, number four, Peter Lloyd. And in those conditions, I think an exceptionally good win. In second place, number 758, Mark Chesel. In third place, number 844, Vince Kinchin. Fourth place, number 64. Fifth place, number 5, John Priest. And sixth place, number 27, Tom Ledbetter. Seventh place, number 129. Eighth place, number 811. Ninth place, 62. The winning time, 132.60. Uh, but you know when conditions start off dry in the morning, and you think, yeah, he's going well, he looks like having a good day. Then something like this happens, that the wind gets up, the rain starts to come, the track conditions change completely, and then it really does become a totally different race program. There are riders that do prefer these conditions, can you believe, and actually go extremely better than other riders. Oh, I'm looking to see that laid-down machinery of Andy Sell, because that may be one rider that uh, will revel in these sort of conditions, Richard Masson, with all sorts of problems on that first bend, is right at the back of the field. And Will James with problems on that first bend as well, putting it down. Oh, James Cawthorne back in fourth place. He was another rider that was going well before conditions got worse. But Andy Sell, and there's an interesting thing for those of you that are interested in the engineering concepts, because that was a piece of machinery that he designed himself. It is totally different to the A-frames that all the other riders use. 
and I wonder whether that has given him a distinct advantage with conditions being like this. Theory being is that you get the centre of gravity as low as you possibly can, that gives maximum drive to the back wheel, and you can see that it really does look to be working at the moment. Uh, Tony Atkin had a win second time out, he's going well in second place, he's got in front of Mark Seabright, but neither of those two seem to have an answer to Andy Sell, as he does get almost a complete length of the straight ahead of the rest of the field, and that takes some doing in normal conditions to get ahead that far of Tony Atkin. But Tony fighting every inch of the way as he comes around that bend, Mark Seabright's got no answer to him at the moment, James Cawthorley is going to pick up fourth by the look of it, but if Atkin goes past for second, Seabright takes third, Cawthorley takes fourth, Simon Giddings is content with fifth and Graham Gordon gets sixth spot, but look who's back in seventh place. Richard Musson, unbeaten until this ride, not happy with the conditions at all. Official result reads as a win for number 50, that of course was Andy Sell. In second place, number 10, Tony Atkin. Third place, number 167, Mark Seabright. Fourth place, number 169, James Cawthorey. Fifth place, number 179, Simon Gittings. Sixth place, number 263, Graham Gordon. Seventh place, number 12, that's Richard Musson. Eighth place, number 19. Ninth place, number 177. Tenth place, number 305. 11th place, 18. The winning time, 131.77. 131.77 the top. Well, here we go then with race 21. It's Alan and John Blewett that have made an absolute cream of a start. They go into that first bend ahead of Craig Cheat. And we remember Craig had problems on his second ride and he now has come through on the inside, or has he? Well, John Blewett went extremely wide. He was quick into that bend. It forced him wide at the apex of the bend, but he's recovered and he gets back in front of Craig Cheatham. But we can see that Adrian Davis, unfortunately, was left on the line. It's going to be a straight scrap between these two. Slightly different styles. You see that uh, Alan and John Blewett really do rely on the speed down the straights. Craig Cheatham prefers to ride the bends hard. And this will be interesting confrontation because... You can see that Craig Cheatham is no stranger to these sort of conditions. Alan and John Blewett will be relying on the fact that they can go faster down the straight. But we'll watch to see what happens on that pit bend. You can see that the much tighter line is being held by Craig Cheatham. That gives him the advantage on the exit of the bend, but it's this last three quarters of the straight that Alan and John Blewett take up the advantage. Alan desperately trying to hold a much tighter line on that bend. He's noticed that Craig Cheatham drifts a little bit wide on the exit of that bend. He now tries to come through on the inside. So a great scrap between these two. There's a lot of psychology being used in this one, I think, because you can see that Craig tried a different line around the bend, and Alan took full advantage of it. Now Alan has got the advantage. Craig must be thinking, what's he got to do this time? And he gets absolutely filled in. He'll again try and take a tight line, but Alan and John Blewett, if he's got any sense in these sort of conditions, he'll hold it tight and completely fill the following rider in in the middle of the bend. Uh, that gives him the advantage going down the straight, but you can see the checker flag will be out this time. That was a good attempt from Craig Cheatham and Clyde Reynolds, but it's going to be a win for Alan and John Blewett. They take their third win from three rights. Craig Cheatham, a second place. Well, it looks as if we're actually losing more outfits as we start the start of this race than we're actually getting into the competition going into that first bend. Well, it was John Mitten that lost it at the start, and you can see that we've also got uh, Roy McGuigan on the middle of the circuit. It means that Pete Dyer and uh, passenger Justin Westaway are actually uh, leading the race in front of John Hiscock and Tony Bannister, but they do look to be taking it very, very casually. I don't think the conditions have actually suited the sidecars at all. And John Mitten looks to be taking it very casually. Chance perhaps for me to talk a little bit about John Mitten's bike. You'll notice that it's a totally different to everybody else's. It's uh, one that John brought out about a year ago that uh, he was questioning whether it would be successful or not. But, uh, it is, of course, a two-stroke Kawasaki that he's right, which you may be interested to go and have a look at around the pits. Quite an adventurous thing to try. Nobody's been too successful on uh, two-strokes with sidecar racing. 
and John's convinced that this thing is going to be competitive. Oh, as the chequered flag goes, that is another win for Pete Dyer and Justin Westaway. Second place goes to John Hiscock and passenger Tony Bemister. And if you thought that was a little bit quicker than it looked, well, we think it only was three, but not so worry. We know it's cold and wet out there. <laughs> the official result then, race 22, a win for outfit number 58, Pete Dyer and passenger Justin Westaway. Second place goes to number 184, John Hiscock and Tony Bannister. Third place goes to number 45, that of course is John Mitten and Matthew Framroller. An incredibly quick time, 125.57, I know it didn't look like it, but please note that was just three laps. races to go in the third leg and we've just been told by the clerk of the course that Reg Blackburn unfortunately missed his ride there in race 22 so he will be coming out in race 24 so a decision made by the clerk of the course equally um, a lot of the riders have been expressing concern over the uh, worsening conditions and I think uh, possibly all of you would agree that what they decided to do is not have the fourth qualifying legs I think you'll all agree with that decision I'm sure so at the end of this uh, sidecar leg, there will be a 10 minute interval so that uh, obviously those people that have been out there exposed to the conditions get a chance to grab a cup of tea, coffee, whatever. Anybody else that's uh, been watching, of course, the facilities are laid on behind me. So there'll be a quick 10 minute interval. We'll then sort out exactly who it is that goes in what final. And then obviously while the track is still in a rideable condition, the riders can then put on a good show for you and indeed, I'm sure we're going to see a very good final. But they're concerned that if we run another eight races over this conditions, the conditions certainly don't look like getting any better. And obviously the track now is well and truly sudden. I think you'll agree with us that uh, the car of the course has made a very wise decision. I know he has been in consultation with a lot of the riders, and I think all of you in the pits will be pleased to hear that announcement. I know it sometimes means that riders that revel in these sort of conditions may have had a chance of getting higher up in the last rides but in the interest of safety i think the right decision has been made <laughs> So here we go then with race 23 we should be looking for four outfits at least as they see them go past us for the first time oh roy spreadbury has made the best bit going into that first corner brad osborne goes up there close to him Penny Hook is up in third place and Roy Spreadbury looks to be having problems coming out of that first bend. Brett Osborne has gone through in front of him as they open up down that back straight and into the pit corner they go. Oh, Brett Osborne it is that's leading from Roy Spreadbury. Roy doesn't look happy with the conditions at all. So Penny Hook may be able to catch up on him. Oh, Brett Osborne and Matt Sleek looking for good points this time. Oh, Roy Spreadbury starting to close up now on him. It looks very, very rough in that top bend. You can see those outfits going up and down. You can see that underneath the grass surface, it looks very, very soft soil. They've been digging out in the same places. It's exactly when they put the power on that they start digging the holes. As they come round past us for the second time, it's still... Well, I was going to say it was Joe Monk, but... Or Brett Osborne, but you can see that now Roy Spreadbury and Steve Kensington have got in front of them. Oh, they've now started opening up the gaps. It looks as if Roy's trying to find the best way around that top bend, actually. Oh, I wonder if uh, we are going to see any of these riders trying to sort out whether it's better to go on a wide line where it's much, much smoother conditions. Oh, Roy Spreadbury preferring to go on a tight line. That's where he's hitting all the bumps you can see in the middle of the bend. 
Oh, that was interesting. Brett Osborne has gone for a much wider line. That does look a smoother line as he goes round that top bend, but of course he's been caught up in all the loose, and that slowed him up completely. Penny Hooker's got a lot closer to him. Well, it will be the checker flag this time as Roy Spreadbury comes to the line. Oh, 43 Roy Spreadbury and Steve Kenshin it is that take it. Oh, it's close to the line and Penny Hook has just sneaked second place. That was a good intelligent ride from Penny Hook and Keith Watts as they uh, pinch second place on the line from Brett Osborne and Matt. Three. Well, we get underway with race 24 and we look to see them going into that first bend. That's Gary Wright that's got to the front. Mike Keefe is up in second. Reg Blackbourne... Uh, you may remember I said that he was been given the opportunity to go in this one because he missed his ride. Well, he couldn't get his outfit going. as we watch them come round. This, of course, is the last race before the interval. It's all getting very, very close indeed. Gary Wright has slowed up coming past us, and you can see that Mike Keeper has taken advantage of that. He now gets to the front as he goes into that top bend. And Gary and Steve Wright will sort the problems out in the loose on that top bend. Now, well, I can see that in the interest of safety, the red flag has indeed gone out. So, away we go then with the first of the finals. So, we've this Tom Ledbetter that's made a tremendous start. That looks like a Mark Seabite is going out. Or, am I expecting the Seamark Seabite? I am indeed expecting the Seamark Seabite as he comes round off that first corner. It is Steve Wright has gone for the inside line, Tom Ledbetter went wide, Andy Parker's up there as well, John Priest is up there as well, so Tom Ledbetter and John Priest have shown that their experience will count in these sort of conditions, both of them well up there, but Mark Seabright, you can't say that he's not experienced at all, he's back after injury, it's great to see him back again, and as I say that, you can see he's put his bike down in that top bend, Tom Ledbetter avoids him, goes round the outside, Andy Parker now takes over the lead, and we know that Andy's a good old scrapper. He'll get in there and get stuck in and have a go. John Priest and Tom Ledbetter then. The two experienced ones up behind the youngster, Andy Parker. So as you watch the team and go down that back side there, you can see that down the back straight it is Andy Parker that's still got the lead. John Priest has got in front of Tom Ledbetter as they close up again going into that bottom bend. Choosing to go the smoother wide lines, you can see those two. Andy Parker's tackling the bumps a little bit on the inside. That seems to be paying dividends. Oh, Mark Chesel now getting in on the action as well, as we see them go down that back straight. Andy Parker it is that has set the pace. Well, I'm pleased to see that Mark Seabright is just coasting his way back to the pits, so no problems there with that tumble he had on that top bend. Andy Parker takes it very cautiously round that last bend as he comes towards the chequered flag. It is going to be Andy Parker, a brilliant ride from him. He takes the final. John Priest a good second place. There's a win for number 230, Andy Parker. And we say very well done to him. In second place, number 5, John Priest. In third place, number 7, 58. That should be Mark Chesel, and in fourth place, number 179, Simon Gittings. Fifth place, number 844, then indeed is Vince Kinchin. Sixth place, number 64, Chris Malone, and seventh place, number 27, Tom Ledbetter. The winning time, 144.57, 144.57 si the time, but a very courageous win there from number 230, Andy Parker. Well, it looks as if we have indeed got the B final on the way. I can see that Mike Keep has got away from uh, Brett Osborne. I'm disappointed to say that I was expecting to see a lot more outfits, but I'm told that there was only Penny Hook on the line, and she now indeed has got going. So three outfits only going in this B final. 
Mike Teep and Ken Hollyfield leading at the moment from Red Osborne and Matt Sleep. So, and no one on the other riders has managed to make it to the start line. We then sit back and watch as Mike Keep uses all his experience to make sure that uh, he would at least not be caught by Brett Osborne. Oh, Penny Hook just uh, adding a bit more to uh, her racing experience and deciding that the green grass looks a lot healthier than the bumpy corners. <laughs> Well, I wondered if Brett was actually going to give Mike Keep a bit of a race, actually, but he doesn't look as if he even is in the mood for catching up with Mike Keep. I can't see that Mike is going anywhere near quickly, but Brett doesn't have an answer to him at all. He looks content with that second place. Just one more lap to go then for Mike Keep and Ken Hollyfield. I understand now what the big weight was before they actually got this race started. Obviously they thought they were going to be six at least on the line. And as we watch to see them go into that pit bend for the last time, Obviously, everybody in full agreement that the conditions have gone against us as the day's gone on, but Mike Keat comes round to win the Salisbury Sizzler for 1994 B final for the sidecars. He indeed has uh, put in a strong effort this afternoon. Brett Osborne is going to come round and take second place. And uh, Penny Hook will indeed pick up the third spot if she completes. And Penny Hook completing the third place in the B final. You've made your own choice in your own mind. It's a tremendous lineup, and I think everybody has agreed this afternoon. It was tremendous to see such a good entry this early in the season. Remember, Easter course is early this year. As we get underway, we watch to see what happens. Trevor Banks has made a good start. Steve Bishop's up there as well. Andy Sell moves through, going through the middle of those two riders. We've lost one rider in that first bend. And as they come out of the first bend, it is indeed Andy Sell that's got to the front. Trevor Banks is up there in second place. Steve Bishop holding third at the moment. Dean Garten in fourth place. And as they go into that pit bend for the first time, Andy Sell proving perhaps these sort of conditions are absolutely perfect for his engineering technology as he goes down that back straight and into this top corner for the second time. Trevor Banks it is that's got the challenge as he comes round that top corner. Richard Muston I can see has pulled out on the far side. But he's leaving the fight to everybody else. I've not seen Paul Fry at all as they come past me. I'm told that he's here somewhere. I'll find him in a minute. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Well, he's a lot further down the field than I expected. Let's keep up with what's going on at the front, though. Two very experienced riders. Andy Sell and Trevor Banks have ridden in these sort of conditions before. Andy Sell looks to be getting the better of it at the moment, though, as he comes past us going into the last lap. Just leaving from Trevor Banks. It's going to be close to the line. Trevor Banks will not give up at all. He goes wide going into that pit bend. He knows there's a bit of smooth ground out there, and Trevor Banks has got problems. Uh, looks as if Trevor Banks has lost his chain going out wide there. He must have picked up a stone or something that's lifted the chain off. It means that the Salisbury Sizzler has been left wide open for a very experienced rider who's designed this machinery himself. An absolutely brilliant ride for Andy Sell. He crosses the line and takes a checkered flag. Steve Bishop finishes in second place. A good determined ride from him. In third place is the young Cornishman Dean Garten. John Jeffries, a brilliant ride from him, showing that he can keep up with all the experienced boys. A great ride back from the youngster. Oh, uh, James Cawthray just crossing the line there. We knew the condition. Well, the last race of the day, we go with the sidecar sizzler as they get underway, and as they come past me for the first time, it looks like Alan and John Blewett have made the first 
break as they go past us. But as you can obviously all see that we've had outfits coming together in front of me here.